Okay, um, I will uh, talk a bit on the Industry Forward Intervention Fund, on the uh, Domestic Investment Strategy Fund, we call it as short form as DISF, and Industry Forward DISF. I will explain what is the differences. And then I will talk about automation capital allowances and also MIDA Smart Automation Grant, uh, which is uh, we have already uploaded into our website uh, last week. So I will update on these uh, four grants uh, and incentive basically. Okay, the Industry Forward Intervention Fund is, an, um, is a financial support uh, facilitation for the SMEs, uh, which is in the manufacturing and related services sectors, uh, moving forward into Industry 4.0. And this is a fund which has been given by the uh, government for the uh, for those company SME companies who have already undertaken the readiness assessment. And uh, this fund is a matching grant of 70-30 and is a reimbursement basis with the maximum expenditure eligible of 500000 so the 70% will be subsidized by the government and the 30% will be borne by the company. From the 70% which will be subsidized by the government, 30% will be given as in upfront to the company. Okay, and what are the things which is uh, the company need to be uh, eligible for to apply this grant, all right? They must be uh, manufacturing or manufacturing related services companies and uh, they must be uh, into the uh, compilations of the SMEs, which is the readiness assessment uh, is one of the eligible criteria under that. And uh, they must be in operation for at least three years and they have a valid business license and they have completed their RA. All right, so upon receiving your uh, readiness assessment report, uh, you can submit the appli application for intervention fund to MIDA. So we will uh, bring your application with the complete information to the intervention fund approval committee. And upon receiving the um, approval, MIDA will send an approval letter together with a grant agreement to the company. So the company will be given a time period to sign the agreement with us. Upon receiving back the signed and stamped grant agreement, um, the company will receive the 30% upfront and you start to implement your project, is once you have completed, you come back to MIDA to claim for the 40%. So when you claim to MIDA for the balance 40%, we will do an audit visit uh, together with uh, the SSO that have already did the RA for your company. So we will visit um, the invoices, we will visit, uh, we, will, uh, we will check the documents, including visiting the plant and also uh, checking all the invoices, the payment vouchers, and any other related documents. Uh, from that, we will bring your application of claim to the uh, JPPG grant meeting in MIDA. Upon receiving the uh, uh, approval from the meeting, we the company will receive the remaining grant from MIDA. All right, this is a, 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 you know, a table where you can actually see it was stated that the application submitted to MIDA should not be more than two months from the date approval received uh, from MPC. But um, due to the current uh, situation, uh, we still accept companies to submit the application to MIDA as long as the fund is still there to be given to the company. So for those companies who have already received the RA report uh, two, three months ago, but you have not submitted, if you feel that you did, you have already exceeded the two months, um, do not worry. You can still send in the application to us and we will look into the application, all right? And the grant agreement, uh, you have to sign with MIDA not more than 30 days from the approval date uh, letter given by MIDA. And the last submission for intervention fund is on the 31st December, 2021. Okay, when you apply uh, the intervention fund to MIDA, the expenditure will be based on the RA report. Basically, uh, sometimes it could not be uh, exactly the same, but if it's a similarity to the recommendation, and if we find this is what the uh, assessors also agree that the, com the company needs to do, then we will uh, approve for the company. 
All right, but make sure the expenditure which is not eligible do not apply is the uh, purchase or rental of the land, building, vehicles, and furnitures, your renovation or loan, promotion activities, and then your OPEX, such as uh, salary, employee benefits, traveling expenditure, and expenditure on R&D activities or working capital not related to the project. All right. And when you submit to us, please make sure there is an application form attached, your readiness assessment report, your technical proposal, all right? What is in your technical proposal is more on the project description, the scope of your project, the duration of your project, the method, which this is where your solution provider will assist you, the source of technology, expected deliverables, and breakdown of the expenditure and make sure to attach together your latest financial statement audited for the past three years and the manufacturing license. And also, if not, if you don't have a manufacturing license, a confirmation letter uh, for exemptions from manufacturing license. In case if you don't have both, but you can still apply for manufacturing license with MIDA. Say for example, if you have your workers more than 75 workers, or your paid up capital is more than 2.5 million, you are eligible to apply for manufacturing license. So you need to apply for manufacturing license with MIDA first before you apply for intervention fund application, you submit in the application. Or in case if you're not eligible for manufacturing license, you, can, you still need to apply for the confirmation letter for exemptions from manufacturing license from MIDA. It's a letter, but to prove that you are a manufacturer, all right? Okay, this is some of the list that we have uh, created on uh, do's and don'ts when you apply intervention fund application with MIDA. So this is based on the applications that we received from companies and uh, we approved for the companies. So we would like to highlight this. Please have a look at this um, slide later. So uh, please register with BIS Forward, where you can engage and source your technology. And um, please look for the local solution providers. Uh, and uh, it's very important for you to indicate who are your solution providers, all right? And then make sure if, say for example, um, you're a company and you have few companies and you will look into your shareholder structure. So one company within a group of related companies may be granted for an uh, intervention fund, subject that the amount granted to the group not exceed uh, 1 million. So that means, for example, if you have one, uh, three subsidiary into one group, so the, all the three companies uh, will enjoy, um, accumulate 1 million only, not more than that. It can be given like 300,000, 300,000, 300,000, for example, you know, but it could not exceed 1 million. And then please follow the readiness assessment report recommendations and um, make sure that at least one of the element of 4.0 is included in your technical proposal. You need to also list down the grants or incentive that you have currently enjoyed, if any. For example, if you have enjoyed any grants from uh, MDEC, from uh, maybe from uh, Madrid or from uh, SME Corp, please indicate that uh, in the uh, form, all right? And when you submit the application to us, make sure you also uh, attach together a diagram of the existing production line uh, with the proposed additional features of hardware or software and diagrams with uh, whatever that you are proposing for the new project. So that, that should be indicated in the diagram, all right? And don'ts, that means um, this is not eligible, uh, basically. Solution providers or system integrator, which is included the cost of accommodation, transportation, professional fees is not eligible. And then simple automation uh, is not uh, allowed. That means it should be F at least one or two uh, integrated elements of smart systems, uh, solutions and connectivity. And then the grant is not meant for the same project. It's a mutually exclusive grant and it's only for one project. 
and other courses such as basic ERP on accounts, finance, HR management, um, smart TVs, IT infrastructure and networking is not considered, is not eligible. So when you look at these all courses, this will, it will not be granted by the committee basically. Moving forward uh, into the uh, industry forward DIS, DISF, which was introduced last uh, 2019. Uh, it's an, to assist the, those companies who have uh, undertaken the readiness assessment. Uh, it's a 60-40 uh, matching grant. 60% will be subsidized by the government and 40% will be borne by the company. Under the industry forward DISF, there is five different categories of grant. The R&D grant, the training grant, the modernization and upgrading facilities equipment grant, purchasing of a new technology or licensing and obtaining international standards and certification. And all these expenditure must be related to industry 4.0 and also in line with the recommendations of the readiness assessment. Most company, companies will not uh, request for all the grants because there are certain companies who do, does not require uh, for certifications or for license. It depends on the industry. Most probably that those companies who are involved in the aerospace industry or the um, medical uh, device industry, they will look forward for the purchasing of technology or the uh, certifications. But other companies, most probably they only refer to the uh, training grants or modernization grants. So you come forward to us with a uh, project, um, uh, a business proposal, which is related to your company's activity and your plans. All right. This is the grants that are available under the DISF. And the priority sectors that looking, we are looking forward is the one, the under the RMK 11 previously, the aerospace, medical devices, pharmaceuticals, advanced electronics, machines and equipment, and other industry case by case basis. All right, we are also uh, expanding the scope for the services sectors, uh, which is, I know, you can see in the screen as well. All right, the main condition for industry forward DISF is the company must adopt at least one of the following 11 industry 4.0 technology pillar. So when you do the proposal to us, we will look detail what are the uh, element of 4.0, which is uh, included in your project. All right, automation capital allowances, it's not um, something was introduced in the, for industry 4.0, but it could be related. It's something been introduced uh, late in 2015, all right? And uh, it is to encourage the manufacturing companies uh, to adopt the automation, uh, specifically for the labor intensive industry, and to also to enhance their productivity in the manufacturing sector. For the uh, automation capital allowances, uh, we are collaborating with Siri, where the non-technical part will be uh, done by MIDA, where the technical part will be done by Siri. So Siri will be looking into few uh, technical verification based on your submission, such as a reduction in the number of workers, a reduction in the man hours, increase of your production volume, quality improvement and other factors related to whatever that you're applying for. There are two categories of the incentive. It's an incentive, yeah, it's not a grant, all right? It's an incentive. So for if you fall under the first category label intensive industry, such as the rubber products, plastic products, wood, furniture, and textiles product, or the automation capital allowances of you can get exemptions of automation capital allowances of 200% on the first 4 million expenditure incurred within eight years of the assessment from 2015 to 2023. And if you fall under the second category under other industry, uh, the fabrication metal products, e, e products, chemical products, transport equipment, food products, and others, you can, you know, you can explore for automation capital allowances of 200% on the first 2 million expenditure incurred within eight years of the assessment from 2015 to 2023. All right, 
So where who are the one who are eligible to apply this uh, ACA is those manufacturing companies and who have a business license from local authority and you have a manufacturing license or, or a confirmation letter of exemptions and the company must be in operation for at least 36 months. Okay, uh, next. Uh, what are the criteria of automation machines and equipments that we are looking forward? It is used directly in the manufacturing floor and it should be enhanced of productivity and it can also adopt technologies uh, which will be verified by our partner series. And also the machine should be used at least one month after installation and the machine should be in operation at least three months after the production of its first batch of the new product. All right, for those company who's currently enjoying reinvestment allowances, all right, when you apply for ACA, uh, your, you will stop enjoying the reinvestment allowances. So while you're enjoying the ACA, but the period of the reinvestment allowances will still continue. So when you finish enjoying your ACA, uh, then uh, you will continue back enjoying your reinvestment allowances and the period will go on. So the period will not stop, but you will stop enjoying the readiness at uh, the reinvestment allowances while you are uh, enjoying for the ACA uh, exemptions. Okay, this is the process flow. You submit the application to MIDA. MIDA receives the applications. If it's incomplete, we'll return back to the company. If it's complete, you're eligible, we will send you a letter and relevant documents to the CIRIM. CIRIM will look into your application, they will do a factory visit, they will submit a report of technical verification to MIDA, and MIDA will, will issue a consideration letter. Uh, that consideration letter, you can uh, bring it uh, to IRB to enjoy the incentive for exemptions. Okay. Um, next, uh, this is MIDA Smart Automation Grant, which is introduced recently under the uh, Penjana, and we just uploaded it into our website last week. Smart Automation Grant is given on a matching, a matching basis of eligible expenditure up to maximum grant of 1 million per company, and the objective is definitely to assist the local SMEs and MTC, uh, MTCs all right, the mid-tier companies to automate and digitalize their operation, production, and trade channels, and also um, definitely to reduce the reliance of the low-skilled foreign workers, which also will increase their comp uh, SME's competitiveness on the international level, and also to improve their efficiencies in manufacturing and services sector, as well as create uh, new job opportunities with high-value sectors, and also align with the national policy of industry 4.0. Okay, how does this um, grant works and who are the people who are eligible, companies who are eligible? The company has been in operation for at least 12 months. You have incorporated under the Companies Act 1965. Your equity ownership of at least 51% owned by Malaysian and you have a business license from the local authority you are engaged in the manufacturing or services activity. And what is the definition of the SMEs that we are looking forward here is for those manufacturing companies, your uh, SMEs, your sales turnover not exceeding 50 million or your employees not exceeding 200. And those SMEs under the services, sales turnover not exceeding 20 million or employees not exceeding 75. For those mid-tier companies, your sales turn, uh, turn uh, over from 50 million to 500 million. And for services uh, sectors under the mid-tier companies, your sales turn over from 20 million to 500 million. All right. The eligible expenditures of to the automation machines, equipment, software that are used directly in the overall value chain of the manufacturing and services activities. All right, there's one long list of non-eligible expenditure, like for example, the rental for the land, your wages paid for the employees, insurance, utility, R&D expenses, it's not eligible to, for this grant. 
all right and this list might me uh, change or we might add on based uh, based uh, depends on the when we receive the applications when we look into detail how um, which one we can reduce and which one we can consider which one we need to add on we will uh, revise this time to time all right the project duration must be completed within 12 months from the date of approval letter issued by MIDA. Any utilized grant amount after 12 months, we will withdraw back. And any request for extension is request to make uh, to MIDA at least two months uh, from the project end date. All right. When company apply for the SAG grant, they must also be committed to the deliverables. All right. Um, they must at least uh, have certain, uh, they must have the reduction of the unskilled workers, the reduction in the man hour, the increase in production uh, volume, uh, quality improvement, reduction in defect rate, increase in service deliver delivery, and also reduction of man hours in delivering services. And the company must only meet at least one of these project deliverables. It's not that you have to meet all these deliverables, at least one. All right. For the detail of the how you apply to MIDA, it's all in our website. This is the flow chart, chart that we actually uploaded that I will show you later, the link. All right. Okay, um, under the smart automation grant, uh, we are also, um, we might have signed an MOU with few panel banks, uh, banks, and the banks have an acceleration project, uh, program is, um, is to give those company the knowledge on automation and digitalization. So uh, for those company who are successfully undergo this program, you may also submit the application to MIDA and you, will, you can present it the application to uh, MIDA for approval. All right, this is for those companies who have not, uh, you know, do not have readiness assessment and you don't know how to move forward. So this, this is like a uh, free consultations given by the bank to this company, how you can move for your projects. They have a technical uh, expertise too in the bank who can also advise you how you can move forward your project, all right? It's free. So you can also leverage on that program. And the application uh, received from, by MIDA from 4th December to 31st of December 2021 are eligible to be considered for this grant. So what you have to submit to us is the application form, the latest financial statement, SSM, company profile, a copy of your business license, a manufacturing license, and also uh, for those company under the services, you have to submit to us a license uh, or a letter from the relevant ministry or agency that govern the activities. All right, this um, uh, SEG grant, when you submit to MIDA, we will look into it and we will invite you to come and present your proposal as a pitching session in MIDA. All right, so those are uh, eligible applicant uh, will present your proposal to the uh, grant committee. And once you receive your approval letter, you will sign an agreement with MIDA. And for those company that you, uh, that we award you the grant and you have purchased, say for example, you apply for a higher purchase from a, from a financing, financing uh, panel bank. All right, so we will pay directly to the panel bank. Say, for example, if you get an amount of 300,000, although the agreement is signed between MIDA and also the company, and but you have uh, you did a higher purchase from this panel bank, so we will pay directly to the panel bank the amount that uh, that you're applying for. All right. And uh, we will conduct an audit visit as usual and the report of the audit findings, we will bring it to our committee meeting. Once being uh, approved by the committee, we will disperse the money to the company. For more information on the DISF SAG grant for ACA, please go to our website as stated here. So all the incentives uh, we have already uploaded here. Look, have a look at it, even in, for intervention fund, we have already have the process flow, the guideline, the form, the template. 
So please follow that. It's all in words. Fill in in the words and send it to us. So if you have any uh, doubt on how to go about it, who to submit the application, you are most welcome to email us and we will revert back to you. If you can't get us, you know, you can always email to our uh, division, uh, Advanced Technology R&D Division, which our division is led by our director in Chet Nur Izzam, Ibrahim. So you can always uh, call us or you can drop us an email if you want to know further on this incentive and grants. And this uh, incentive and grants will be uh, processed by the industry division. For example, if you are a company into the automotive sector and you are applying certain, um, you're applying for intervention fund. So it will be processed by the transport technology division. So we will engage you directly to the transport technology division so that they will process accordingly. So we will sit in in uh, any of the meeting to assist how to go about on the technical proposal from the company. We will advise them based on whatever information that we have. Thank you so much.